It's your boy Evan Fair Plays. We gonna get into today. We gonna we gonna get into information about the sun. You feel me? Information about why we need it. Why we need it. That's all I'm gonna say. Why we need it. The sun, the engine of our planetary system. Although the sun, with a diameter of about 870,000 miles, easily outshines all other celestial bodies in our planetary system, it is still only average in size among the stars. Specifically, the central fixed star of our superordinate planetary system is a dwarf star. And with that, the Sun is in the best of company. In fact, most stars in our universe are dwarf stars. The main characteristic of dwarf stars is that they release energy by fusion processes of hydrogen atoms in their core. Within this process, the hydrogen is converted to helium. If we look at the Sun from our earthly point of view, it appears like a brightly shining round body in the sky. The fact that the dwarf star, which is located at an average distance of 93 million miles from the Earth, presents us with a yellowish hue is incidentally due to the influence of the Earth's atmosphere. If you look at the Sun from space, however, it appears in a brilliant white. As mentioned at the beginning, we owe it to the influence of the Sun that the most diverse forms of life could even develop on our planet. In fact, the energy with which the Sun supplies the Earth is considered, along with several other factors, to be an absolute basic prerequisite for the existence of living beings. It's because of our favorable spatial constellation to the Sun that we have suitable climatic conditions for the development of life at all. Past and Future of Our Fixed Star Because of its mystical appearance in the firmament, and its powerful property to divide our earthly life into years, days, and nights, the Sun was already revered as a supernatural being by various advanced civilizations countless centuries ago. The ancient Egyptians, for example, believed that the warming disk in the cloud realm was actually the powerful sun god, Re. Although the Earth and the Sun are separated by an immense distance, the dwarf star nevertheless possesses enough power to supply our earthly home with sufficient energy. One look at the imposing dimensions of the fixed star is enough to realize the huge celestial body's powerful energy. The Sun is not only 110 times larger than the Earth, but also has 330,000 times its mass. It's estimated that the Sun, just like the other members of our planetary system, was formed about 4.7 billion years ago. Despite all its size and power, however, even the sparkling bright engine of our planetary system is ultimately a finite entity. Most experts assume that our Sun will enter the last chapter of its galactic existence in about 5 to 7 billion years. In contrast to larger stars, however, the Sun will not go into a breathtaking supernova it simply has too little mass for that. If, in many millions of years, the sun's hydrogen supply is exhausted, the dwarf star will continue to inflate and eventually become a red, giant star. Since the sun will literally absorb all celestial bodies in its vicinity, this process will also mean the end of our blue home planet. However, experts consider it unlikely that life will still exist on Earth by that time. As a result of various processes, the Sun's radiant power will continue to decrease over the coming millions of years. Probably in 500 million years, the solar radiation will be so small that no more life on Earth will be possible. The stage of the red giant star will not represent the last in the existence of... I like how they just, you know, predict that the, the, the Sun ain't gonna be here no more after so many years. And it's been here after, and it's been here for so many years. You feel me? It ain't going nowhere, man, unless we wanted to go somewhere. It's of the sun. Eventually, the imposing celestial body 
will shed its outer layers of gas. What will then remain will be a small, shrunken white dwarf star and planetary nebula. Chemical composition and solar corona. In terms of its chemical composition, the sun is three quarters hydrogen. This is followed by helium, carbon, and a vanishingly small array of 63 other chemical elements. Most of the sun's rays are emitted in the so-called photosphere. Temperatures of over 9,900 degrees Fahrenheit prevail within this atmospheric layer of the fixed star. It gets even hotter when we approach the sun's core. Here, the thermometer climbs to an incredible 59 million degrees Fahrenheit. If you look at the surface of the sun from a shorter distance, you will quickly notice many small dark formations decorating the outside of the celestial body. These objects are called sunspots. In the core, these are regions that are somewhat cooler than their surroundings, which is why they radiate less light than the other solar areas. The outermost atmosphere of the sun is called the corona. The spectacular images of this region leave us flabbergasted. While we can see the complex nature of the corona in detail in these photos, we can only perceive this fascinating atmospheric layer of the dwarf star during a total solar eclipse. Then, the corona appears to us like a bright, irregular veil of light that stands out clearly from the darkened silhouette of the sun. If we look at the composition of the corona, it becomes even clearer what galactic spectacles are actually taking place here. The fiery envelope is formed by the influence of different scattering processes. Dust particles, free electrons, gases, and heated particles are responsible for the appearance of the solar corona. Images of this kind show us the incomparable beauty of our universe. Just take a look at the granulation, the characteristic grainy surface structure of the sun. The image taken by a solar telescope in Hawaii gives us an authentic impression of the complex structure. Meet Google Fi, a phone plan by Google. With Fi, only pay for the data you use, or go on the Structural nature of our galactic fixed point. Solar winds. Another fascinating galactic process in the solar corona is the formation of solar winds. This is a gigantic accumulation of charged particles that are permanently ejected from the solar corona into the infinite expanse of space. The resulting stream of electrons and protons then sweeps through the universe at supersonic speed. Solar winds reach speeds of between about 200 and 500 miles per hour. Incomparable images of the solar orbiter. In order to explore the fiery fixed point of our planetary system in even greater detail, the ESA, in cooperation with NASA, sent the solar orbiter towards the Sun in February 2020. The spacecraft is pursuing some highly exciting mission objectives. For example, it will take a closer look at the solar winds that have just been described. The puzzles surrounding the Sun's poles the origins of the sun's magnetic fields and the influence of solar flares on space weather are also among the important questions waiting to be answered by the space project. After the successful launch, the spacecraft was able to approach the sun to a distance of about 48 million miles in June 2020. This is roughly half the distance that naturally lies between our blue home planet and the dwarf star. During this time, the probe also produced the first detailed images of the Sun, which in turn were made available to the public a few weeks ago. Among them are some high-resolution images of the Sun's surface, including some spectacular pictures of sunspots. Campfire on the Sun The resulting images represent a real milestone in the field of space research. Never before had mankind succeeded in flying so close to the sun. Leading experts have high hopes that the amazing images taken by the solar orbiter 
will help us to better understand the nature and processes of the sun in the future. Equipped with six imaging instruments, the probe sent several images toward Earth last year. When scientists received the images, they could not believe their eyes. The first photos taken by the orbiter showed completely new, previously unknown structures on the surface of the sun. These are a collection of small, brightly shining areas on the sun. These were ultimately called solar campfires among the experts. Researchers suspect that these are relatively tiny solar flares, millions of times smaller than their larger counterparts. However, it was not only the mere existence of the galactic bonfires, but above all, their gigantic number that amazed experts on Earth. How these amazing formations occur will have to be clarified in the future. One theory assumes that they are so-called nanoflares. In other words, small explosions. More information is needed before we finally solve the mystery of the bonfires on the sun. In the future, for example, Scientists want to take a closer look at the temperatures of the objects and derive further conclusions from the data obtained. What do you think about these spectacular images of the sun? Feeling the pressure. Hey. So, we know the sun is releasing a huge amounts of photon energy. Hey, this is your boy in fair plays, man. You know, it's no fear. Stay fearless. Stay focused.